This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water, and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com. What is this? What is this machine? Yeah. yeah. And, and the ones in Japan are even more scary than, than the ones that we've imported. <laughs> the, the bidets the, are? The bidets yeah. are, yeah. 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 It's they, like, they, you have a keyboard and a... <laughs> it's like know, on this... Uh, and of course, you know, this is probably, what is it, like early early 2000 something. Yeah. yeah. Right. They're and intimidating. It, it very. And yeah. then there's a screen, or some kind of screen with lots of buttons and it's not in any Western characters. Yeah. Oh, okay. What is this? So you press all the buttons. Eventually, like, something comes out. And, <laughs> and you're so head to toe. Like, okay, yeah. this is yeah. actually awesome. Welcome to the Zulu Podcast, where we talk all things poop, toilets, and sanitation. Through insightful news, impact stories, and quirky humor, we aim to discuss and highlight the critical role toilets play in whisking poop out of our lives, the impact toilets have, or lack thereof, in the health and wellness of humanity, and what Zulu is doing to help solve the current global sanitation crisis. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Zulu Podcast. We are very excited to uh, introduce you to our guest today. He's flown all the way in from Paris just for this. <laughs> Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, today we have Jean-Baptiste Dupri on right. the podcast today. And hopefully I didn't butcher that. <laughs> that was perfect. <laughs> okay, good. I thought it was Jean Valjean. Nope. <laughs> it's also Jean Valjean. Oh, you go by Jean Valjean. Yeah, but after, in the sewers, you go by Jean Valjean. After midnight. <laughs> only after midnight. <laughs> um, we are going to get into um, some really cool things that he's doing that I can't wait to talk about. Checked out his website today and really excited to share that with you. But before we do that, we have, of course, some poo news. So Darren, I'm going to bounce it over to you. Okay, right in the poo news, you know, right? And we we hope you get your the uh, the French perspective on these this poo news, because um, all we get here is American news. We we kind of block out the rest of the world, right? So, um, <laughs> uh, assuming this is this is real news, it's all it could be. Fake. Yeah, it's all fake news. It's, could you never be fake. Know. This seems pretty real. The Wall Street Journal uh, sounds pretty legit. Um, says here, more people are getting uh, colon cancer mm. than ever before, and doctors don't know why. Uh, it used to be a thing for old people, like, oh, you're over 50, 60, you know. But younger people uh, getting uh, the disease. It says uh, 20% of new colon cancer diagnosis were people under 55. And, um, and many, uh, some people in their like thirties and it's just a mm. kind of a trend, like, Hmm, that's kind of odd, you know? And I know, I know we're, we're talking about mm-hmm. what's cool about your product. Um, uh, Jean is, uh, that, you know, you're all, it's all about health, health awareness. And, uh, um, is this something you're seeing? Um, is this news to you or is this something? No, that- it's not news. It's, uh, it's, it's sad news that it's, um, that it's happening. Like a lot of those chronic disease, which used to be reserved to like elderly, you know, mm-hmm. times of life, there seem to be coming in earlier and same thing with Alzheimer's and other chronic diseases. And there's lots of reasons for it. Environmental behaviors. We can, we're not here to, to go down that list, but, um, I think in what's make, you know, science or in, in medicine, uh, today, having to take your turn, it's it's um, it's it's looking at those diseases no longer in a reactive way, but in a um, mm-hmm. you know with anticipation. Meaning, let's look at our uh, basic uh, vitals and also our stool. Let's get into the topic real quick. Uh, let's look look at, at our stool right away and um, and see how um, you know it evolves over time. So colon cancer. And colorectal cancer, there's lots of different, you know, diseases that affect, you know, bowels. Um, those diseases um, at stage four, people realize they have it. At stage one, yeah. no idea. Yeah. And, um, but there are visual, uh, there are visual ways to look at stools and, and different markers that can, uh, that can be identified um, in the stool that can, actually look at maybe a stage one. And this is what we're really, really working on. Uh, 
with, you know, without rest because no one's really looking at this this way. Um, right. And with the advance in AI, and we can talk about it a little later, but with the advance in AI and, and looking at machine learnings and, and you know, convolutional, convolutional neural networks, like we can look at, have a machine look at our stool and make this analysis and really quickly, you know, maybe steer someone towards a doctor or a specialist yeah. and then do the more in-depth analysis. But yeah. Um, there's there's yeah, a need I know, for that. I know Jocelyn's always looking at her stool, but um, <clears throat> Ew. she uh, she is not a doctor, so <laughs> I, well, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't know if I trust her mm-hmm. diagnosis, but you know, I mean, there's a at 50, least you're 50 looking at it. I'm right on most things. Some people don't look at it like, like well, shouldn't I? that's what I do. I'm just like, oh, yeah, no, you know, let not, it go. Not many people want to. I don't yeah. want to. Yeah, yeah. But some I'm just kidding. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if you do. I, or not. Yeah. Well. No, but this is interesting. I did not know about this statistic or this um, latest, mm. these findings, but I did get a note from my insurance that said that they will now be covering, um, um, oh my gosh. Endoscopy. The, yes. But at 40 instead of 45. Mm. It yep. used to be 45. Correct. Um, and I'm at the ripe old age of 42 and thought, oh, I don't know that I'm excited to go and have this done. But colon cancer runs in my family. My grandmother mm. passed away from it. And mm. my dad gets his checks every year because they always find things. Yep. If he weren't getting those checks, right. I, it, there's a very good chance he wouldn't be here right now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But these are things that you do not think about yeah. until Something. everything starts falling apart. Mm-hmm. And right, then right. you start to, you know, dig a little deeper into your own health. But because we don't have physical manifestations of some of these more complicated uh, diseases, it's it's out of sight, out of mind, which is why... I'm very excited to talk to you about mm-hmm. what you're doing to like help us prevent a lot of these things that are preventable. Right. So that was the yeah. perfect article to lead into. Well, there's one, there's interview. one more article. Okay. This is from the daily mirror from the UK, which mirror, I mean, the mirror, huh. you know, you never know. It's, uh, you know, I think they cover a wide gamut, but this is, uh, uh, and I love some of the British terms for, you know, they have some unique, uh, words. This is, uh, I never heard of porridge poo before. Have you? <laughs> Huh. I mean, porridge is sort of a oatmeal. What is like like, like oatmeal, right? Oh my gosh, I can. Um, I, I just had an instant visual when you said yeah. that. I don't know if it's accurate, but, but this, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. It probably <laughs> is. But this is a this is a related article from mm-hmm. the from the Daily Mirror. Um, it's um, uh, it says one of the main symptoms of bowel cancer has you know is like blood in the stool, abdominal pain. Changes. Wait, did you say bowel cancer? Well, yeah, I guess. It would be colon cancer, bowel. Okay, I, mean, maybe they, okay. I wondered maybe they if that was the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. What do they call it in France? Some. Mm, oh, colon. Colon. We colon. Use the term colon, and then if it's an upper GI, it will be intestine. And, mm. you know. Okay. But it says here looser stool. But it says paying attention to your toilet bowl is something that most of us forget to do. But obviously, the appearance of your stool. And they say that um, this uh, get an expert uh, Gemma Stewart says how. A uh, stool that looks like mushy lumps of porridge with soft, ragged edges could be a warning sign. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, you may feel fine, but hmm, that looks a little oh, looks yeah. like porridge. Mm-hmm. So, and I didn't eat porridge. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know if I've ever had porridge, I guess I have. Is it? It's oatmeal, it's right? It's oatmeal. Isn't it oatmeal? Okay. It's an oatmeal with a little. Cream, it's just an old fashioned. It. it makes it sound like you're an orphan if you're eating porridge, but if you're eating oatmeal, you're yeah. a hipster. Correct. So anyway, that's uh, something. Again, it's it's in the news, right? We're not just making this up. It's yeah, uh, uh, yeah it know, is. things are going on there. Yeah, I mean, this is you know the stats are starting to become a little frightening. I mean, seventy five seventy five percent of the U.S. population has some kind of GI disruption. Mm-hmm. So the scope is pretty wide when you talk about disruption. It could be like chronic constipation to diarrhea, um, but twenty five percent that's one in four people. Maybe one of yeah. us here. Um, has some sort of identified um, GI mm. disorder. I would vote for Trevor. <laughs> and so, I mean, you know, no, that's, probably me. I'm, I'm the one on the toilet most probably. Yeah. <laughs> that ranges from IBS, IBD, Crohn's, et cetera. And mm. uh, chronic constipation, as in like, mm. you know, real hard chronic constipation. That's right, right. And that's one in four people in the US. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Okay. That, is, that is, I, I did not know it was that high. Mm-hmm. That seems. Yeah. Wild. And when you, you know, talk to your family members, whatever, because people don't talk about it. That's not, again, that's not really a topic of conversation at the dinner table, but it's, it's a reality yeah. for one in four people in the U.S. It's amazing. Is it as taboo in France as it is here? I mean, my family, I mean, no, we don't talk about that stuff. I've been in other families where they talk about it all the time and it's like the first thing everyone's sharing with each other. Right. But I wondered 
culturally in France, are mm-hmm. people comfortable bringing up these these things? Maybe a little more, but I would say again, it's it's more family. It's yeah. you know, like here are some families where we should open and like you know, think about fart and fart right. you know, in front of each <laughs> right. other. It's okay, <laughs> um, and I think it's just another. I, I think there's just generally a more openness in, in the French culture to talk about you know your body and what goes, what's right about it, what it's yeah. not, and then yeah, mm-hmm. who can be part of that. Right. Um, yeah. Right. Um, so on that topic, uh, we want to get into, um, since we're talking about bowel health and, and, and this kind of thing, we want to talk about some of the products you're developing Mm -hmm. and your company, uh, before we get into that, maybe, maybe give us a little background of, uh, what got you into the toilet space, uh, why are you on the bootcast today? Uh, Mm -hmm. do you regret sitting here at this moment? (laughs) Uh, you know, we haven't any, asked any, the hard questions yet. You know, the door is open and you might say, time out, I'm out. <laughs> time out. I'm I thought, I thought we were going to be doing something else, but, uh, <laughs> anyway, maybe, maybe a little background on what, uh, you're maybe a little bit where you're from and, uh, what, what got you into the toilet space? Yeah. It's a, it's a funny story. Like anything, you know, every time you end up in the toilet, there's something, you know, funny <laughs> that drove you there. Um, so I, uh, background. Okay. Real quick. So I'm French, grew up in France, you know, did my schooling there, went to med school. Mm. And then left. Uh, I, I, I've always loved how, like, you know, understanding the, the human body and, and mm. like, you know, biology and all those complex processes. Just, I'm fascinated by this. Mm-hmm. Um, the practice of medicine is something different, mm. obviously. And um, also, I wasn't the best student at that. <laughs> so I uh, thought maybe business might be a better route. So I went to business sure. school and whatever. So I spent my career. Um, so I, I lived in France and in other cities in, in, in Europe. Um, worked for Sony for most of my uh, corporate career, mm. and um, which brought me to New York about ten years ago. Okay, and um, yeah, I was there um, working for Sony Corp. Um, and you know, this time of life where like, okay, you know, career's done. You know, great. I, I grew up in this you know little field in the middle of the field. And it sounds like it's the sound of music of the south of France, and yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah. Um. So, but kind of middle of nowhere, and I made it to New York. And I was like, okay, this is awesome. Yeah. Why? But, why would you leave Provence and, yeah. and go to New York? It's kind of like down. I, that's like a step down. I think. So, <laughs> I mean, you know, once you've been through it, then you realize, oh, that wasn't so bad. But when, oh, it's, yeah, yeah. when it's, you know, yeah, I guess you grew up there like, I'm going to get out of here. Yeah, just get out of here <laughs> as fast as possible because it's just like mountains of boring. I hate these flowers and this beautiful <laughs> scenery. I yeah, the songbirds and the, and the food and yeah, the wine. Yeah. And the, the roosters <laughs> in the morning and then those bells, you know, five minutes later, it's like perfectly yeah, yeah, time. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it does happen. Yeah. But no, it does get boring. And so we're like, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's get out of here. And then right. um, New York was awesome and my career was great. But then a couple of things happened. Um, we had a, you know, big restructure in the company. So I was asked to then relocate to London, mm-hmm. our global headquarters for the, um, uh, the entity I was, um, managing was relocating to London. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I, I've done London and I think, um, I, I'll, I'll st- stay in New York. Mm-hmm. And right around that time, um, my, uh, my dad got diagnosed with something pretty, pretty rough mm-hmm. and, um, it was brain cancer. Okay. Well. And so it was like perfect time that, you know, I'm going to leave and spend time, uh, with my family. And it felt like this was the right thing to do. Um, and so I went over and he got some emergency surgery and, and it wasn't good. And the doctors gave him like maybe two months and like, okay, well, I'm, I'm not going back. We're going to spend this time together. And, um, luckily it was more than two months. It lasted he, he survived you know, for two years, uh, mm-hmm. after mm-hmm. the diagnosis. So, um, after eight months of, you know, being at home and helping, you know, my mom and, um, him just getting used to the environment and this new, new life that wasn't fun. Um, mm. he sent me back and like, you just go, go live your life. You know, you, you, you've done enough, just go live your life. So I went and went back to New York and lived my life, met my wife, who is now my wife. Um, yeah. and, um, and then you know, obviously a little later he passed away and then my mom was diagnosed just on the back of that with ALS. And then Mm. I'm just going to fast forward. Then my brother had a heart attack and Mm, passed away a year later. So it's just like, you know, there's things that, yeah. yeah, And there's things that sort of like are 
actually really tragic. Um, kind of makes you like wake up and, oh, wait, you know, what's my life about? And Absolutely. Yeah. And then you have all those questions coming to you. It's like, you know, what, what am I doing yeah. here? Am I, am I using my time right. wisely by, you know, going up the corporate ladder and then just like, you know, doing that rat race. And right, right. Um, so decided, yeah, yeah, maybe let's do something mm. meaningful. Mm. And so with all the, the good connections I, I, I had acquired, you know, working at Sony on a, you know, just global scale and in different uh, areas of the business from product development all the way to um, marketing. Great, great group of people um, that I could reach out to. And so I put a group of maybe five or six people from like engineers and then um, just also some medical experts and just some, you know, really smart marketers and looked at, hey, this is the problem. And I'm glad you brought up those stats. So, so you you so you had a, this concept like you you met, you're bringing these engineers together to work on this toilet seat to work on or, a or at, at that point it was not it wasn't the toilet seat it wasn't yet. necessarily it was it was just like you know we're like a little think tank okay what what can we do to improve what can we do health and yeah longevity? and to have yeah and okay. to have a health monitoring device that's just built okay. into people's lives right. That's not going to interfere with anything because, you know, like you mentioned in the beginning, like yeah. you only think about those diseases when when they're just like, you know, knocking right. on your door or when you're at that age when right, they right. should arrive. So um, the, the Apple Watch didn't come into your mind like, oh, maybe I can wear this, you know. Yeah. Or exactly. maybe that had already been done. And so. yeah, the, yeah, the Apple Watch was around, but the Apple Watch was only looking at one set of, sure. you know, metrics. And it was just heart and it was, you know, very specific uh, aspect of um, of your health when there's so much to look at. So you got and, this group together to sort of like, yep. hey, let's brainstorm on some yep. ways to. Okay, cool. correct. And then, yeah. and I remember, so we were back in San Jose. Um, where are we? Utah. So we're like west of here. Um, it's that way. That way. <laughs> that way. <laughs> and um, and it, and we had this aha moment mm-hmm. when we. Okay, you know, we had all those parameters. Like it needs to be daily. It needs to be, you know. Um, non-invasive and then fast forward, how about the toilet? And then we looked at the toilet and the mm. toilet seat just made complete sense. Right. And it's something you use every day. You use it every day. You're naked when you're there. So, yeah. you know, you have yeah. great skin contact and mm-hmm. yeah. access to stool and urine. Like, well, that's, that's a wealth of information. Right. Without having to use a needle or like mm-hmm. just, you know, being invasive in any way. Right. So that was the start of the journey. And that was a true motivation. Uh, mm-hmm. Like, okay, well, there's something here. Yeah. And it seems like it's going to be a long journey because we're looking at something that's not being done. We haven't, no one's ever taken measurement of heart using your, your thighs. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you're putting it here, you're putting it here, not down there. Yep, exactly. Typical. exactly. But is it doable? Is it feasible? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. We're not going against the laws of physics here. This is something that is doable. It's yeah, going to right. take, you know, the right people and, and a bit of time. So sure. Went back to New York, um, put, you know, a business plan together and then went and, you know, fundraise, did, did started fundraising. And then we raised a couple million dollars to, okay. to get started. Yeah. And so we're off the, off, off to the races. Nice. Nice. Um, and, and this is Cava Health. And this is Cava, Cava Health. Sava. Yeah. Oh, are, am right. I saying it? Uh, well, how do you say it? Come on, Darren. <laughs> it's Sava, Sava, which means, Oops. how are you? Sava. It means, how are you in French? Oh, it has the, a little sedilla I... under the seat. Oh, that, the little... I, ha- uh... I had to look up how to type that on a computer, but I figured it out. <laughs> oh, it's good, good, good. Cause most yeah, you call know. that a, uh, what is it? A uh... Sedilla. Okay. In French, it's a sedilla. Okay. It makes, it makes uh, the, the K sound. S, S sound. So it's it's, per, it's spelled, uh, to me, it's spelled. It looks like Kaba. Kaba, but it's Sava. Sava. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Which means, how are you in French? Very good. And and that's the question we're trying to answer. You know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How, are you, how are you doing on the inside? So, I, oh, sorry. Yeah. I don't want to interrupt. I just, um, and we will obviously uh, put a link to your website in the show notes. But what you have on there, this product is so sleek and beautiful. I want to get into, you know, the details of how it actually works and how mm-hmm. it's going to, you know, show us, um, you know, the, the markers of our health, but it's just so pretty. Thank you. And I was just telling Darren before we started recording, I'm remodeling my home. Mm-hmm. I'm, so I've got two bathrooms that have been completely gutted and I really wanted to put a bidet toilet seat in there. Yeah. But what I ordered when I actually saw it in person, it was so big, it was so bulky. And yeah. there were like, all these cords and pipes and it just did not look like something I wanted yeah. to yeah. put in this beautiful new bathroom. But 
yours is just, I, I mean, it almost looks like a work of art because it's so simplistic. Yeah. So you nailed the, the problem. One of the problems um, of bidets uh, in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, the pandemic has has done great things for bidets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, short of the toilet paper, people turn yeah, to like, yeah. okay, alternatives and you know, paper, let's use right. water. Right, right, right. But prior to that, and even still now, um, there were a couple of barriers to entry or or like some cultural barriers that were there. Yeah. Uh, so maybe just going back to a little bit of the origination of um, of the company, I guess I, when I worked for Sony, I spent months in Japan, uh, mm-hmm. you know, going back and forth. Mm-hmm. And my very, very first trip was um, in Tokyo and Sony headquarters was awesome. And I go to the bathroom, um, actually it was, well, that was the second time. First time I was at the hotel. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, well, what is this? What is this machine? Yeah. yeah. And, and the ones in Japan are even more scary than, than the ones that we've imported. <laughs> yeah. the, the bidets are? The, the bidets yeah. are. Yeah. 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 It's they, like, they, they, you have a keyboard. And a, <laughs> it's you know, like on this. <laughs> and of course, you know, this is probably, what is it? Early, early 2000 yeah. something. Yeah. Right. They're and intimidating. It, it very. And yeah. then there's a screen, or some kind of screen with lots of buttons and it's not in any Western characters. Yeah. Oh, okay. What is this? So you press all the buttons. Eventually, like something comes out, yeah. and, <laughs> and you're so head to toe. Like, okay, yeah. this is yeah. actually awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that was my first encounter with Japanese, uh, a side of Japanese culture, which is pretty awesome. It's like a glimpse of heaven. Like, oh, it this was. is what heaven is like, you know? And then, yeah, and you're clean. And you're clean, yeah. and you're yeah. Then you go back to. You go back to America. America, the, the dirty, it's, dirty. Place, yeah, our, our you know? primitive toilet paper ways. <laughs> yeah, not great. Mm. So, um, yeah, that was one of when we were looking at all the different products, and um, when we had that aha moment, and you know, that meeting was like, well, the toilet is the place where we should, you know, build some kind of built-in technology. Mm. And I was like, well, well, then now it's thinking about how are we gonna how are we gonna market that to people? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, people in general like need, you know, the, the they need a need to be fulfilled and if they don't know what it is. And so like selling preventive health is a pretty tricky thing. Cause mm-hmm. like, if you're not sick, unless you're like, you know, scaring people or, well, you know, if you're not getting all those things checked by whatever age, like, yeah. you know, um, so you feel fine. It's so no problem. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. it, it's a very, it can be a hard sell. Um, so we thought, okay, what, would, what could be a Trojan horse for that? And that's when the bidet came. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I was yeah. like, bidets haven't made it to America, but they're awesome. Mm-hmm. We know that for a fact. So yeah. why are they not here? And so like we did some mm-hmm. a bunch of studies uh, and kind of trying to understand and market like why bidets haven't hadn't made yeah. it to America. And yeah. what what did you find? Because I've been curious about mm-hmm. that too. They are awesome. It's so much more effective. It's just it's a much more pleasurable pleasurable experience. Mm-hmm. So I mean, they have them in many places around the world, but they just haven't really taken off yep. in the states. Why do you think that is? I think there's three main reasons. One is design. Mm-hmm. And you pointed it. Um, when you look at a bidet, one of the the ones that you can buy, you know, now at uh, not Bed Bath and Beyond, that's over. Uh, Home Depot, rest in peace. <laughs> rest in yeah, the peace. rest in pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. The first one that came to mind yes. actually it was top of mind. Well, well, a moment, moment of silence for uh, yeah, BBB. BBB. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so Home Depot, those that you can get at Home Depot, they're like. Yeah, they're super bulky. And, yeah. and the first interaction, or I guess the first impression people have with them are like, is this for geriatric use? Like, yeah, they've never yeah. seen one. It's like, see those pipes, you see those like big bulky things in the back. It's like, am I going to fit on that? It's like, it's mm. the equivalent of starting to put bars in the shower. Yeah. When, and right. it's like, oh, yeah. it's not yeah. pretty. It's Doesn't not pretty. Nice. It's not inviting. And it doesn't feel like, well, this is going to be your next best. You know, right, right. Experience. Yeah. And that's going to change your life. No, like, you're, you're no, mm-hmm. this is not the right mindset. So, like, Design was like number one. Let's change this. Yeah, and two was um, the way it's talked about. Like how how are bidets you know being talked about in the U.S.? How are they sold? Well, those distribution channels, Home Depot. Let's, let's go back to Home Depot. Like you're not gonna use. You're not gonna have like this. You know, someone at the aisle of Home Depot or, like tell you everything about a bidet and how right. great it is. And those brands, like they're massive brands. Like, we're talking Kohler. We're talking Toto. They have the marketing power, but they're channel dependent. So they're going to sell through those big retail chains. And there's no chance that you're going to communicate how like life-changing and how amazing those products are um, in in those contexts. So it 
we we came across a, a, a deck uh, from Toto. Um, somehow someone got us. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was their like strategic plan to it, to enter America, the American market. Oh, interesting. And uh, yeah, in some ways you kind of realize why they didn't make it. One, you know, there's a big cultural like misunderstanding, like coming in with like, you know, Japanese type of communication into the American market, no good. But also they were very much relying on those channels. Mm-hmm. Um, so in the meantime, you're very much aware of, you know, who's in that space, Hello Tushi mm-hmm. came along and yeah. did, did a fantastic job at yeah. completely breaking down like the, um, the taboo. Yeah. The taboos around like, you know, poop mm-hmm. and, and yeah, we all poop and, and yeah. it was brilliant what they did. And they we started, actually, we actually sell the Tushi bidet on our marketplace. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're and, great. You know, we're very grateful for, for them and what they've done because they've, mm-hmm. they've really, uh, transform, you know, the, yeah. the, the perception of, of those products. Now they've done it with, at the beginning, at least it was a niche audience. Now, they're big um, and, and they're, they're becoming more and more um, relevant to a lot of people, but they started with very specific audiences and being funny and a little crass and right. whatever. And that worked. Yeah. You have to go to hello Tushy, but no, don't no go to Tushy. No Tushy. <laughs> Oh, if, oh. You, if you just go to Tushy by itself, no, it's you watch have to uh, watch, one, one of our, watch out. One of yeah. our interns one day came out of oh, a shoot. conference room and horrified. It's like, I just went, on, she was doing those like comparative analysis, whatever oh, you asked me to. I went on Tushy.com. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, don't go back. Don't go back. Yeah, NS- it'll, it'll ruin you NS- for, for life. Yeah. NSFW. Yeah. yeah. So, so, okay. So it was the design and right. then just the, the cultural awareness having, that's a pretty mm-hmm. big paradigm shift for a lot of people here. And what was the third thing that you found? Yeah, it was distribution. And then um, it was, I guess it's part of those, the, the, the cultural shift that needed to happen. Um, so, you know, distribution need to be different. So direct to consumer was the answer to that. And then like, what was going to be the message? And at the time, Hello Tushi was, starting. Um, and they were taking that angle, which we thought was brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, but with what we had in mind, you know, developing a health monitoring device, we couldn't really go, right. you know, that, you know, funny and crass. And because right. we just, you know, it's something. Well, it's a, a, it's a medical device. Yeah. And, and so it's, it's obviously people, you know, when they look at their health and medical advice, it's, you know, it's a serious subject, mm-hmm. you know, you, you can have some humor, but yeah. You know, not don't go too far. Not yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. You, you can you can humor yeah here and there, but um, try to find know. that line. We try to find we try to find that line at Zulu Podcast. Sometimes yeah. we miss it. Yeah, <laughs> most maybe most of the time, but but yeah, as far as like knowing yeah you know, who who you're marketing to is important. Correct. And so yeah. you know that third one was you know our end goal is going to be different, and our end goal is going to be about yeah. health, and it starts in the t- in the toilet with hygiene like good health yep. you know starts with good hygiene and yep. that was that was going to be our, our, our positioning um but that needed to change and we instead of coming through with those old channels with those old ways of saying things we're like hey if apple was coming up with a toilet that was the toilet of the future mm-hmm. what would it be mm-hmm. and so yeah we heavily focused on on you know those those different areas and Got design it. was number one so like actually our first permanent hire was an awesome designer, uh, James Van de Pand, who's had, you know, amazing, an amazing career in, in, in product design and industrial product design. And he's worked for you know, a bunch of different firms and, you know, somehow we got lucky to bring him on board and he's, he's he, the one. James, behind. you knocked it out of the park. Oh, it's so yeah. beautiful. Over and over. And there's, that's, there's only one product on the website, um, yeah. but we're obviously developing yeah. like other things and he's, knocked it out of the park with his team on, on many occasions. Um, I mean, speaking of bidets, you are currently selling a bidet on uh, your yep. po- uh, potty bidet, Correct. right? Yeah. Um, so that's available. That's currently. available. Yeah. Um, and it's, you, you don't have to hook it up to anything. It's all electric, right? Uh, it's all mechanic. A me- mechanic. Yeah, oh, okay. It's all mechanic. So you don't have to, you just have to hook it up to water. Uh, okay. And it, it's a fun little product. If you look at uh, Hello Tushy, it's the same, the same technology. Right. Uh, it's plumbing. Right. Uh, but um, there's there's Hello Tushy and there's a bunch of other things on Amazon. I'm sure you're mm-hmm. very much aware. Yep. And, uh, you know, you could, you could buy for like, you know, 25 sometimes and up to yep. $50. And those are great, but they may, they may have issues very quickly. I mean, it's like they're not using brass. They're just, you know, plastic 
you know, everything's plastic and yeah. it can break. And you know, we had some horror stories from customers. And then yeah, I bought, I bought a few of those. For I, I live in Puerto Rico uh-huh. and I bought a few of those very economical kind. And yeah, about a year or two, yeah, you're going to need to replace some things. Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the ones that I bought uh, from my house here is, um, is uh, you know, by uh, Bio Bidet. Yeah. And that's the one where it's, yeah, you got to plug it in and it's heated. And it's, there's a lot Is there of, like a remote that goes with it? The one yeah, I yeah. was going to buy had a remote. Has a yeah. remote and, you know, it's a, it's actually, a, you know, you can, I mean, I have mounted mine on the wall. Mm-hmm. You can actually touch it, but you, you could, you know, hold you it and hold it, whatever, yeah. but it'll mm-hmm. do, well, it's just about anything you'd want it to do, <laughs> you know, besides, we haven't, we haven't hooked it up to chat GPT yet. So it's coming, but that's coming, right? Wait, what oh. is GPT? Yeah, it's your uh, some AI type technology where it'll um, it, it, you know, wipe, your, wipe your bum. For we're you. gonna log in. You okay. know, while we're, we're gonna log in. Okay. And we're gonna start playing with it. You're gonna. It's gonna blow your mind. Um, um, so, so you've got the so Party yes. Bidet is available now. Yeah, Party Bidet is available now, and, and it's uh, a very you know simple product in in terms yeah. of quality. We, we wanted a product that's not you know those like. But that's but that's sort of the precursor to that's a precursor. Sabah, the yeah, Sabah Bidet, and, and which the reason is we coming. launched yeah the reason yeah. we launched Party was. Um, you know, in these difficult times where funding and getting funding from venture capital funds is not what it used to be, right. uh, we felt like we need to have a little, you know, lifeline. Uh, and yeah. so this is Makes our, our kind of insurance, uh, life insurance. And it's, it's, a, it's a side uh, brand, um, but we don't treat it as a side business. It's very much, you know, core to our portfolio, but it's, it's a brand that we are, you know, now actively pushing out and, mm-hmm. and the the profits from this brand are, you know, directly uh, funneled into the R and D yeah. and all the work that we're doing on the Saba products. But the Saba seat also has a bidet in it, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Saba seat has, it's 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 the Ferrari of all oh. of all bidets. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think I want a red one. Yeah. <laughs> we can make it red. Make it red. Yeah. A I mean, custom Zulu one. Should we get a yellow? Oh with like yeah, blue? cool yellow yeah. and blue with some Zulu. <laughs> Yeah, Maybe we, should, we should do a co-branded one with some Zulu on it. That's no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, we we even have a you know some 3D renderings of a gold one. Okay, of a gold version. <laughs> nice, Just, nice. You know, James uh, that's the one Jocelyn wants for her place. Please, uh-huh. gold glitter. My girls would love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I mean, you're not finished yet, right? Still renovation. No, and in fact, so. my contractor was just asking me about the toilet seats, and now I, I well, when is this available? Because I might tell him to hold off. <laughs> yeah, can you delay it for? Uh, let's see. Uh, we can just sit on the actual thing for a while, or learn to squat. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, are we'll, you offering it direct to direct and consumer? We will be or? offering okay. it direct consumer at this okay. point. Um, we've had a window of of pre orders, and we've locked that because you know. I saw that your wait list was closed. Yep. Yeah. Um, we have, you know, a few thousand people like pre-ordered, registered. Um, but may, there may be like a back channel. Yeah, oh, it's this. You know, <laughs> I think it's here. Yeah, yeah you might, you might. Uh, okay. You might, you might be, yeah. Get Jocelyn's email in there. <laughs> Slide it in. Yeah. Oops, there's another one. It came. So yeah. tell so, us, yeah. like, what are all of the things that it, that you're hoping will be able to tell us about us, our health? And then how does it do that? Mm-hmm. So our main, uh, I guess, motto into when we started building this product was non-invasive and completely passive. Mm -hmm. So that means you're going to the bathroom like you're going to the bathroom today. Um, And there's no interaction. No, it just happens. So what are we looking at in terms of areas of health? We're looking at four different areas. One, uh, heart, Mm -hmm. heart health. So we're able to perform an EKG. Um, oh, and, wow. and those measurements are like, this is, this is all working. Um, and it's more precise than an Apple Watch. I mean, it's the, the beauty of, of a product like this is you're not limited to a form factor that needs to fit in like, you know, something yeah. that's the size of like a, a quarter. Mm-hmm. Um, so you have more, si- more surface for skin contact, which means like, you know, better yeah, adherence, a better and, reading. Yep, yep, and so more accuracy. So, like our EKG is more, uh, more accurate, mm-hmm. and not not a twelve point EKG you would get at the doctor's office, mm-hmm. but it's it's yeah. quite good, uh, much better than any you know uh, wearable devices. Um, and then anything sort of heart related that's sort of basic heart, um, base heart rate, heart rate variability. Mm-hmm. We are um, hoping after 
a year and a half in market okay. to extrapolate blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, we know it's possible. Uh, we have, you know, friends, we don't call them competitors. We have other, uh, we know of other companies who are working on a heart focused, uh, toilet seat that mm-hmm. monitors, uh, heart health on, only. And there are on, on the crisp of, of, of um, um, extrapolating blood pressure from uh, just seating on the toilet, which is awesome. I mean, that's going to be, once that's done and it's going to be groundbreaking because mm-hmm. you, you think of all the people that have mm-hmm. to monitor their health, their blood pressure, having, you know, to wear a cuff and, you know, doing that every day and right. and they do right. it when they can or want to think about it and when, you know, you could actually just sit down and be done. So that's heart health. Um, then body composition. So that's- Yeah, I was looking at the website, muscle mass, mm-hmm. Body fat percentage. Mass, yep. Uh, so that's body, body fat. Yeah, we're using this similar technology as you would find in those smart scales. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a microcurrent that goes through um, your body. It goes, you know, from one leg to the other, and then mm-hmm. it just like measures everything. Again, a bit more precise because you have like a stable yeah. uh, user and more skin contact, and so yeah, you're able to get all those measurements. And and again, it's not so much in the precision of uh, the, the data. Mm-hmm. Although we're trying to be as precise and as you know gold standard as possible, but it's in the longitudinal value the, the of the data. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And sync patterns, whether it's body fat percentage or whether it's you know base heart rate, like those mm-hmm. things will have a meaning when you look at them just over a month. You know, if you do recordings daily over a month, you're gonna see mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. if things go kind of go off. And is that data being fed into like a smartphone or is it as some kind of are you able to then track it and mm-hmm. so it's cloud. Think, oh look, I'm getting fatter. Uh, the more I eat these things, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a third Twinkie today, and sure enough, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's all cloud based. Okay. So um, the the seat is connected to your Wi-Fi. Okay. Um, has also Bluetooth connection. So like when you approach with your uh, cell phone, it will recognize you and um, sort of transfer data uh, yeah. from there. But it's, it's, everything's cloud-based. So once okay. the data has been captured, it goes up to the cloud. Um, and so, you, cause you could, so you could share that with your doctor or with, yeah, you know. Very much so. I mean, there's it. different, yeah. we're looking at different ways to share mm-hmm. um, the data. Um, we have, we have an app right now that's under development, but, you know, it's very easy to do some extracts and have, you know, build a PDF of like, depending on what doctors you're going to see, uh, but your heart health over, you know, the past three months mm-hmm. or your, um, GI health for the past few months. Right. Um, but uh, before you ask me the question, I'm going to preempt that one. What if someone seat, sits on the toilet and it's uh, not you and we're, yeah. we're recording? Yeah, so yeah. We, we found out that we all have a different um, bio signature. So like the, the sensors that we're using for um, the EKG, for heart health and for um, body composition, um, are able to give you a you know, body, a bioimpedance signature. Mm-hmm. So like everyone in your household will have a different bioimpedance signature. Mm-hmm. So once you sit down, it will, you know, run this quick check and um, kind of lock and allocate your data to you know, user A, whatever that you can name. So it could recognize that who, where, who's seated. Based on who's seated, mm-hmm. they'll say, oh, this is. Yeah. So are you saying that we have like thumbprints on our butt? <laughs> Kind of <laughs> on our thighs. <laughs> okay, on thigh prints. Oh, no, no, because no. there's there's a there's butt a group print? of oh there's no, not a butt print. There is such a thing as a butt print. We, okay. we didn't go there. There's, <laughs> okay. there's a there's a group of scientists out of Stanford who have um, not patented, but like they've they they published a paper on like yeah butt print. Mm. I'm not going to go. It's, it's, it's just too much. <laughs> okay, but you can't imagine. We'll, like, we'll save that for a future episode. Yeah, that sounds fascinating. We'll, uh, <laughs> let's just just compare it to it. We'll have like different lips and mouth, right? Mm -hmm. So when you close it, mine will look a certain way, yours will look a certain way, they all look a different way. Well, same thing for back there Mm -hmm. or down there. Mm -hmm. And um, so that's the print, the butt print. But, you know, the way it's done, and you can imagine that there's a camera going there and looking up. No no one wants to do that. No No one wants to look at that or have their butt. Somehow that's that's going to make it. That's what Tatoshis.com. Yeah, that's (laughs) going to make its way online (laughs) somehow. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. I don't yeah. want my butt print online. No, yeah, no, no. one needs to. No see one wants my to see print. that. <laughs> no. Well, that's fascinating. That's super fascinating. We're excited to, uh, yeah, yeah. So we we covered heart health, body composition. Um, so certain vitals, uh, obviously body temperature, which is a tricky one. It sounds kind of easy. Mason, you could you could 
read all that through, not, I mean, the back of your thigh, but you know, you're, yeah. you're a bum. So yeah. yeah. Uh, There's a lot of info there. Very, uh, quite, quite a bit. Mm. And um, body temperature is a, is a tricky one. We're still, there's different technologies that we're evaluating. Um, the most, uh, the most um, plausible right now that we will probably integrate is the measurement of urine temperature mm-hmm. from a distance okay. with uh, two infrared sensors. Wow. Um, and that, having that tracking, like, because core body temperature is a very useful metric. Mm-hmm. Um you know, can track ovulation uh, and and help generally with fertility. On, oh, I didn't even think of that. On yeah, that that's end. great. Um, and and obviously a bunch of other benefits. But um, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of the key vital signs for a reason. But it's actually really hard mm. to measure accurately um, mm. because again, to measure ovulation, you need to be precise. Not mm-hmm. you know, one degree. It's like you know, tens of a degree. Right. Um, so. This is this. I think we're we're getting close to that one, and and that's actually a very very exciting one. Um, so oh. you know, vitals, and then the last one is GI, and so GI is a is a, is a big one, mm-hmm. is a big one, and um, so we're not talking about on the on the on our website yet, but we're developing a, a GI centric device that's actually not going to be a seat; it's just going to be a clip on. Uh, device that you imagine a, I don't know if the analogy is great, but like a ring camera. So a ring camera, it's just like you can stick it up on, on your wall and it has a camera and it just does its thing. There's no wires. You just no wires. Mm-hmm. connect it. Yep. And then... Exactly. And okay. it has a battery that lasts for months. Mm-hmm. Um, so same principle. And, but imagine the ring camera just looks down at mm. the bottom of the bowl and detects when there's um, something there. Or when something you know happens, and and that can recognize porridge poo <laughs> uh, and classify it and say, yeah. "Hey, <laughs> I don't think exactly I can recognize what... it." I don't like it. Looks the same to yeah. me. It looks like this, but it might say, "Ding, red flag." That Correct. looks like porridge poo. Exactly, yeah. and and that's that's one of the reasons why. And and depending on how we go, but it seems like we may be releasing this product um, earlier than the toilet seat. Oh, uh, wow. The toilet oh, wow. seat is. I mean, you know, we're talking about an integration of many, many different sensors, uh, and it's it's a beast. It's awesome. Um, we have you know two prototypes uh, back at the lab, but it's 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 going to take. Like, I think we're like still a year and a half, you know, from going to market. So it's kind of like Jet Chat GPT, but like it's, thr- it's, it's, it's is it is it a it's would a it be three. called art, uh, like a AI type? image learning sort of yeah. thing, recognizing different Yeah. Well, I stools. noticed you had yeah. AI as noted as a team member on your About Us page. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting because like, you know, ChatGPT. Yeah, what's her name? Uh, uh, yeah, Jeannie. G- Jeannie. Genius, yeah. it was Genius, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. they or made genius. fun of, I mean, yeah. it's actually the team came up with that. It's like, well, you know, it's kind of your child. It's like, no, I mean, I'm not the data scientist. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't, but it's kind of you know, making fun of me with that. Yeah. But I'm like, yeah, okay, let's go with it. Um, but you know, we, well, we, built, cool. we yeah. built this AI, uh, system. It's, it's machine learning. So mm-hmm. we're using like convolutional neural network CNNs, nothing to do with the channel. Yeah. Um, and which are the most efficient machine learning like systems to classify and to recognize and classify images. Mm-hmm. Um, so we started this about two years ago before, you know, AI was even a thing. And, um, because we realize, like, if we want to look at stool, um, there's two ways. Yeah. There's the chemical kind of looking at the biomarkers, mm-hmm. you know, getting into it. So that means like you take the poop, you send it to a lab, you or you have a lab on site, which is, that's a huge other big other undertaking, which means like you need reactant, you need like chemical things. Yeah. You I know. wanted to do that. My wife said no. No. <laughs> you wanted a full time poop no, analyst no, no in no your house. Lab in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's it, you know, it's yeah, so it's it's it's, in, it's, lo- it's involved. Yeah, yeah, and so so this way it's able just to v- view vis- it. Yeah, visually, visually look and, at it. And, and what was it. interesting when we yeah. started you know, looking at that approach because you know we again wanted this to be completely like you know seamless and frictionless for the user. Right. So like right. having to like buy like you know, some chemical reaction and then put in a cartridge, or whatever. No, like, yeah. nobody's gonna do that. No, right. So right. what 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 does visual analysis of stool can do? 
Yeah. And that's when we turn to our friends at UCLA and mm -hmm. uh, who've done, you know, a bunch of research on and that, that's what they do. Wow. Um, one of our advisors is a um, professor of gastroenterology um, and has been studying the impact of, on, of, of diet and different, like, you know, behaviors on um, GI health and, you know, stool. And we've been working with them for a while, but realized that the wealth of data mm. that's in the visual mm. is insane. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. and it's even more insane when you start to realize that there is no globalized or global standardized database of stool images in the world. There are, there've been studies, uh, you know, in particular, like conditions or diseases that you've that seen have, like charts, like if it looks sort of like this, yep. then, yeah. you know, this is healthy. This is not exactly, but that's sort of a ballpark, like. Correct. And it's yeah. kind of like the, we can see this is the top of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. but like if on those like micro studies that have been done, like maybe like a hundred images and sometimes maybe like a couple hundred images, like mm -hmm. and they've been able to identify some correlations between yeah. this is, this looks like this, you know, when this looked like this, this is that type of disease right. potentially. Um, but it's not been done on a mass scale. Oh, you can't imagine like there's so much to be learned from a mass scale study, which yeah. is what we're, you know, we have like a couple of thousand people signed up for our next, for the beta mm -hmm. of this product. And, you know, in the next six months, we'll have that largest standardized database of stool images ever collected. And when you start layering mm -hmm. on, on these images, those convolutional neural networks, and, um, and now I'm going to get a little technical, but like, you know, chat GPT is a large language, um, model and it's, it's basically, um, it's basically a, a well, it's an artificial intelligence that's able to look at very, very different ways of, um, you know, whether it's language, whether it's images, but like to find correlations, to keep right, it right. simple, like it finds correlations. Finds patterns that maybe the human mm -hmm. eye may take a while to find, but they finds it instantaneously. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's when we, when we start layering those two things, because right now we've been like very much like with, you know, AI training with human in the loop. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and so like we have an image, we say, Hey, either this is on, the, um, uh, the Bristol stool chart, and this is a standardized way of classifying stool. Right. You know, this is a one, uh, this is a three. So we've been training the AI that way and okay. then helping also recognize other biomarkers like excessive fat, excess of um, mucus, uh, presence of blood, et cetera. So mm -hmm. we've been training the AI that way, but now we're entering a new phase where like we're, we're using um, large language models to help us kind of build and discover new patterns and new correlations and, and establish a completely new way to look at stool. And that's, yeah. that's phenomenal. And I'm so happy to just, you know, this technology is just like, it just showed up. Yeah. Well, it's so brilliant because it's, uh, you know, they talk about saving lives, right? And you, uh, you have a personal connection with that because of your family and all that, mm -hmm. you know, it's a matter of, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, oftentimes, you know, if you're, oh, if you do, do get a stool sample, it's like, it's like taking a snapshot in time. Correct. And so the doctor's looking at that one snapshot or, you know, sample, whereas, you know, if I've heard people that, oh, the doctors missed it because they don't see the condition over a broad, like yeah. a, it's not like you can s sit in the hospital for weeks and, and collect all those samples. It was just a one snapshot. Correct. Or you send it into a lab or something and then. Yeah. Oh, well, it looks fine today, but mm -hmm. last week it was, uh, it was porridge, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, that, and so yeah. Th this way it's a continuous, uh, monitoring and that's brilliant that you're able to bring in the AI to learn, uh, to see those mm -hmm. patterns and, uh, well, talk about toilets of the future. Uh, well, I was just going to say. You, you just like the way it looks. I love the way it looks. And this is now going to be <laughs> you like. You can a, have your cake and yeah. eat it too. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it does seem like, I mean we're hearing you talk about it and it sounds like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. We can do all this. And yet it seems like, why haven't we done this? It seems like the most obvious place to get so much information, mm -hmm. the implications and applications of a toilet that can tell us all of this. I can't believe it hasn't been done before. I think we're at a convergence of, you know, it, this is a good time. Yeah. And I think we're, yeah. we have the technology, we have the 
the the silos, the cultural silos, kind of like, okay, we can talk about poop now. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we know someone who has had a very serious GI condition. So, like, you know, let's break down those those taboos. And yeah, if you start layering all these things on those events mm-hmm. happening at the same time, we're kind of yeah, this is where we're at. And I think this is fascinating and and so exciting to be right there in the middle of this. That's amazing. It's, it's, that's amazing. It's, you know, yeah, I, I was thinking before the interview, I thought, oh, Sava, so okay, high tech toilet seat, that's awesome. Jocelyn wants one for her house, but then you uh, when you be two, <laughs> write that down. Okay. Oh, yeah. uh, two for Jocelyn. I'll uh, get her address. But uh, yeah, as far as like the uh, just the applications of the AI, that's like a that's a that's a game changer. It completely you know? is. It completely is. I think you know we're we're, we're looking at so many things. I mean, earlier yeah. you were talking about um, colon cancer and bringing it back mm-hmm. to a uh, very common. Um, yeah. condition and it happens more and more frequently um you know there's the three there's a couple of different visual markers but it's something you know people wouldn't notice the, the, yeah. that stage one characteristic of a colon cancer um yeah. stool type and you know it's thin sausage because usually if you have a polyp that cancerous it will you know make the your stool be kind of a, stretches it out because yeah, it's it out, in the way. Yeah. It's thinner. The consistency will be a certain way. Yeah. It will have some kind of a clay type color and there may be presence of blood, but it's not like, oh, it's just going to be red. It's going to be like yeah. very subtle. Thought, subtle yeah. And in which, you know, again, and that over a certain period of time. So what you need here is not just like one day of data. You yeah. need like, you know, that yeah. longitudinal uh, path right. of, of data and, um, all those different markers, mm-hmm. which you can look at visually. Yeah. And that, I think that that really is the beauty of it, which, yeah. you know, a machine can do for you. You don't have to worry about it. But then you know, this is the difference between like treating stage one versus treating stage four. Mm-hmm. Um, and that our AI can do right now. Um, That's super cool. It. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking down the road when this has become to the point where most households have this. Mm-hmm. And Okay, because it cut. will happen. I know that we Oops. are like over on time, so Oops, sorry. we're going to wrap it up. Okay, um, but this is—I mean, this is keeping someone's grandpa around longer. Yeah, like this is keeping families intact longer and creating mm-hmm. more memories. And it's—I mean—that's the end result of this incredible technology and this think tank that started. What was it in San Jose or, yeah. or wherever you guys were? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, this Silicon is, Valley. I, I want one of these for everyone in my family. Yeah. So that I can have them for as long as possible. Yeah. Hmm. That is, and then just as a mom, like the amount of trips I wouldn't have to take to the doctor's office yeah. for some of this stuff. Yeah. Right. It just, it's so much more convenient. It's so effective. It's incredible. Yeah. It well, it's coming, you know, whether, and, yeah. and that's the thing is like, I'm not talking about our, you know, competitors as competitors. We're friends. We know, mm-hmm. like, you know, I know most CEOs of all the different uh, companies that are working in, in the field. And there's a handful for now. It's probably like I can, you know, name five. Yeah. Um, that are working on the toilet of the future, but I'm so happy mm-hmm. because the, the, the someone is gonna, you know, crack one technology first and then, you yeah. know, we can layer the other and et cetera. Yeah. It's going to be an evolving, uh, setup, but it's, you know, I firmly believe this is the best setup and thank you. Thank you for bringing it back to like, you know, why we're doing this. It's, mm-hmm. Yeah. To help people live longer, healthier lives. Yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm not afraid of death. This, you know, it's all gonna, yeah. it's gonna happen. But if we can avoid those painful years or those times where, yeah, this so shouldn't have us, happened right now. That makes us human, right? If you're, yep. if you're, yeah, we're all subject to death. We all poop. I am 100% you know, t- afraid of death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to avoid it as long as possible. And wanna, if this helps me do it. You just want to die on a toilet. I That'd do. Be like, <laughs> Right. As long as it looks good, that's fine. It will. It will. Um, I promise you that. Um, but yeah, I mean, certainly, yeah, we're at Zulu. We're all about, I mean, we, we, our philosophy is look, toilets save lives. That's why we build them in India and yeah. different places because it literally saves lives. It's mm-hmm. got the twi- you know, twice the health impact that clean water does. And, yeah. and, and yet, you know, it's certainly when you talk about the technology, I mean, obviously different technologies for different cultures, right? And mm-hmm. so, um, you know, this is something that's certainly applicable, especially when you see health trends going the way they are, mm-hmm. you know, with colon cancer and all that. It's like, well, this is something that could, you know, literally have your grand- grandmother or you yourself uh, live <laughs> live longer, right? And, uh, you know, I think everybody be on board with that. Living know? longer and better. Yeah. And, you know, having your bathroom look super chic. <laughs> and, yeah, you look good while you're doing it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jean-Baptiste, thank you so much for coming here and spending time with us 
And merci, merci beaucoup. Avec yeah, merci, plaisir. au revoir. All of the French things. That's it. That's all I know. <laughs> um, but, and thank you all for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I certainly did. I, 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 I cannot wait until this is just a thing. Like it's You're expected that everyone has this list, in their Jocelyn. home. Okay, good. I'm, <laughs> did you hear that? I'm on the list. Yeah. Um, so thank you again for joining us and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Zulu Podcast. Follow us on social media at our links in the show notes below. To learn more, visit our website, zulu.org. If you liked the podcast, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. For even more Zulu fun, send us an email with your toilet stories to podcast at zulu.com for a chance to be featured on the podcast. This episode of the Zulu Podcast is sponsored by Zulu Inc., a benefit corporation dedicated to the goal of universal access to toilets, hygiene, clean water and sanitation through the power of social enterprise. Learn more at Zulu.com.